let me show you guys just in case this is your first time ever seeing um, a loan estimate. Okay. Um, for, first of all, shout out to Kay for even showing us this because it has, yeah. it, it don't have like her social security number or anything like that. It's just, you know, it shows where she lives. So please, nobody be a stalker and show up to her crib. All right. Mm -hmm. First things first. But when you're looking at a loan estimate, let's go from the top left. You see the date that it was issued on 3 1, right? You have the applicant's name, the property address, the estimated property value. Then on the right hand side, you see the loan terms, a 30 year fix, it's a refinance, the product is a fixed rate. You see it's a conventional loan because it's checked in the box as conventional loan. You see that the rate is locked until 311, right? Now this is this is where things get tricky because 311 was when? Yesterday or the day before. So this rate, she has to pay more extension fees to keep the rate. So that's when we was talking about rate extension fees. That tells you when your rate expires. So that rate is technically expired unless they went ahead and extended it already. Now let's go down to loan terms. You have a loan amount, 570, interest rate, three and a half percent. The principal interest payment is 2560. The principal interest is only going to the bank. That's what pays the bank back, the principal and the interest, all right? Now, if you see here in the middle box where it has the projected payments, right? It says that she's going to have mortgage insurance. Wait a minute. You owe 570 and it was 710. Somebody do the math for me. Somebody do 570, 570,000 divided by 710,000. Tell me what that percentage is because I can't look at my calculator right now. Somebody type in chat. What's that LTV? That's how you find out the LTV, your loan amount divided by the value. So everybody's coming up with 80%, 80.02. Is it over 80%? Is it 80% even, y'all? Or is it 80, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2? 80.31 like, is? is what I got. 80.28. So I'm doing, I'm, this is the lesson that I want y'all to understand. It's over 80% LTV. And this is why you see in that projected payment, the first thing that I saw that it was $67 for mortgage insurance, right? And they're projecting that that mortgage insurance is going to go away in two years. Because you can see the first two years, you pay $67. And then you see years from 330, you see that $67 goes away. All right. So now me being the mortgage king that I am, I would just lower the loan amount to 80%. And take away that 0.28 so that way that $67 goes away. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that right there tells me whoever's this loan officer is a fucking amateur because there's no reason for her to have mortgage insurance if you only at 80.28 or 80.3. Like, dude, just lower the fucking loan amount. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's number one. Number one red flag of you dealing with an amateur right there. Now, let's scroll down a little bit, okay? Let's go down. Let's go down. Okay. We got now you see this box 706. That's the property taxes and homeowners insurance. Now, please, guys, <coughs> I want you to understand this. 706, that that's property taxes and insurance. The bank does not control those fees. They only pay it. That's the escrow. That will go up as homes continue to appreciate. Every single year, you'll get what's called the escrow analysis. And that escrow analysis will tell you what the upcoming taxes. And, and insurance is and if you are short or not so although your principal and interest payment is x y and z that is the only thing that is fixed with the interest rate your escrow will go up so if her payment is starting off at 33 34 a month she can almost i can almost guarantee you that her payment at some point in the next two years will probably be 35 36 hundred dollars because of her property taxes and her insurance going up now homeowners insurance is what you can negotiate. So you have to pay attention to your escrow analysis to see if your insurance is raised. So like, I just got an escrow analysis back from one of my properties. My insurance went up $1,000 annually. So my first thing is like, call an insurance company. Why are you raising me? I don't like what you're telling me. So therefore I'm gonna leverage my entire portfolio, cars, homes with, more comp with a different company. And I'm gonna get my insurance back lower to where I want it. You see what I'm saying? So always remember, you can control that insurance piece. Now, um, you see the other breakdown, estimated closing costs is 60, 7703, cash to close. See, you see right here, stop right there for a second, okay? You see, it says cash to close from the borrower, 2200, right? Uh, no, to the borrower. So they're giving her $22, right? Because it says to borrower. So for me, I would say lower the loan amount, forget giving me back 2200 i'd rather not have no pmi 
Exactly. You get, you get what I'm saying here? Like mm -hmm. these people, are, this is amateur hour. All right, let's go to the second page. This is where the fun begins. This is where the magic happens. Let's start right there, Kel. So now top left-hand side, you see that origination charges. This is the only block that the lender controls, block A. So when people go around saying, I'm comparing closing costs, why your closing costs are higher than this lender, da, 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 da. they don't really know what the hell they're looking at because the only thing that the lender is going to control <coughs> are the origination fees. That point, they're charging her 0.794% in points, $4,500 for that interest rate. But Kay, I can tell you probably on Monday, you're going to get another estimate mm -hmm. and it's going to be higher than this because your rate expired already. So they have to extend they need the rate again. Extending it now. So now for the now this would be the fourth extension. They said that they are extending it to the 18th, and this is what they've done. Like we've literally been doing this since January. Yeah, they they're amateurs. And they, this is amateur hour, and this happens when you're dealing with um, and you're dealing with the cost and the people, right? At this point, I've talked to so many people. I don't know who I'm dealing. I did I I did tell them that the loan officer like don't let that man call me ever again. Please don't. So when you when you started the process, you just called like the 800 number on your, on your right. statement, correct? And then I was assigned a loan officer. Yeah, see, that's problem number one, guys. And like you said in the beginning, in the beginning, like everyone thinks it's easier just staying with the same bank that they're with. And this is why I kind of preach to y'all, stop thinking about the banks, start thinking about the people you're working with, mm -hmm. right? Because the people that you're working with will make or break your transaction. Because Freedom Mortgage, you're not working with Freedom Mortgage. You're working with people. But if you don't have a relationship, then they are going to give you the treatment that you have been receiving, okay? Because there's no relationship. So this is why I'm, I, uh, I advocate, advocate for my loan officers and I advocate for you guys to Hire your team the right way. And your most important part of your team is the financing. So you need to have a loan officer that you can trust that can do business in the states that you want to do business in. Um, now, everything else on here, guys, is just like taxes, um, is setting up escrow accounts, you know, all that good stuff, right? So this is nothing that the lender controls. Uh, we got title fees. All of that stuff is third party. Now, I can tell you this, Kay, and I'll be 1,000% honest with you. When I'm looking at these fees, <clears throat> when I'm looking at all these fees and everything like that, these fees are extremely low. Typically, your closing cost is usually around usually around 3% on a refinance. So for you to have 7,700, scroll up a little bit for me. Okay, so they do, they have homeowners at, do you have a, a current, do you have an escrow balance in your account? I do. They tell me that like currently I have about like $700 in there. Okay, so yeah, so they're going to use some of that money to credit towards the closing cost. Right. So, you know, the fees are, are, are very low, all the third party fees. Um, I, I would give that. This is definitely, um, as far as fees wise, I'm not mad at the fees wise. The only thing I really don't like is the fact that they, the rate, and I'll tell you right now, the rate that you have is a great rate. This is not a bad interest rate at all um, for this today's market because you had it. You had it for so long. Mm -hmm. um, you had it locked in since January. So you're really working on January's market. You're not working in today's market. If you were to fire them, now somebody asked in the chat, um, can she leave? Absolutely. You can absolutely leave them. You can fire them. You can work with me and my team. But I can tell you, I, I almost probably can't get you this interest rate because it's just not available today. 